In the heart of Seattle's bustling Pike Place Market, a dream was brewing. It was 1971, a year that would mark the beginning of something extraordinary. Three friends, Jerry Baldwin, Zev Siegel, and I, opened a small shop. We called it Starbucks, a name inspired by the classic tale of Moby Dick. Our passion? Fresh roasted, high-quality coffee beans. We were determined to bring the best coffee experience to our customers. The aroma of freshly ground coffee filled the air. Customers were drawn in, captivated by the rich, inviting scent. They were eager to experience the rich flavors, savoring each sip as if it were a moment of pure bliss. Starbucks quickly gained a loyal following. People returned day after day, becoming part of our growing community. The founders were meticulous about their beans. They knew that the secret to great coffee lay in the details. They sourced the finest Arabica beans and roasted them with care, ensuring each batch met their high standards. Word spread about this hidden gem in Seattle. It wasn't long before the name Starbucks was on everyone's lips. Coffee lovers from all over sought out Starbucks, eager to taste what everyone was talking about. The little shop was thriving, bustling with activity and the hum of conversation. Little did we know a revolution was about to begin. A revolution that would not only change our lives, but also the way the world drank coffee. A revolution that would change the way the world drank coffee, making Starbucks a household name and a global phenomenon. In 1982, a young Howard Schultz walked into Starbucks. He was captivated by what he saw and felt. The aroma, the energy, the passion for coffee resonated deeply with him. It was unlike anything he had experienced before. At the time, Schultz was working for a housewares company where he was already familiar with the importance of quality products. He had just returned from a transformative trip to Italy where he discovered something extraordinary. Italy had ignited a spark in me. The coffee bars were more than just places to drink coffee. I was mesmerized by the Italian coffee culture, the craftsmanship, and the communal atmosphere, the bustling espresso bars, the sense of community, the art of coffee making. I saw an opportunity to bring this vibrant culture to America. I envisioned bringing this experience to America, creating a place where people could gather and enjoy high quality coffee. Schultz joined Starbucks that year, driven by his newfound vision. He became director of marketing and operations, a role that allowed him to influence the company's direction. He shared his vision with the founders, passionately explaining his ideas. He wanted to expand beyond selling beans and create a unique coffee experience. He proposed creating a third place, a concept that was revolutionary at the time. A place between home and work, where people could relax, connect, and enjoy a cup of coffee in a welcoming environment. The founders were hesitant at first, they feared losing the charm of their original concept, but Schultz was persistent. He believed in his vision. In 1987, he convinced the founders to sell him Starbucks. I wasted no time. I set about transforming Starbucks. I introduced espresso drinks. I created a warm and inviting atmosphere in our stores. I focused on customer service. I wanted every customer to feel like they were part of the Starbucks family. The response was phenomenal. People embraced the Starbucks experience. The company grew rapidly. Schultz's vision was becoming a reality. Starbucks was no longer just a coffee shop, it was a cultural phenomenon. Facing the heat challenges and reinvention. Throughout the 1990s, Starbucks expanded aggressively, opening new stores at a rapid pace. By the early 2000s, they had thousands of stores worldwide, becoming a global coffeehouse phenomenon. But with rapid growth came challenges, including maintaining the quality of their products and services. The quality of the coffee and the customer experience began to suffer, leading to dissatisfaction among loyal patrons. Schultz, who had stepped down as CEO in 2000, returned to the helm in 2008, ready to tackle these issues head on. He was determined to revitalize the brand and restore its former glory. We had to make some tough decisions. Closing underperforming stores was necessary to streamline operations. Investing in barista training was crucial to ensure consistent quality and improve customer satisfaction. Emphasizing quality and innovation became our focus, leading to the development of new and exciting coffee beverages. Under Schultz's leadership, Starbucks regained its footing. They introduced new products like the Frappuccino, which became immensely popular. They embraced technology, launching a loyalty program and mobile ordering, making it easier for customers to enjoy their favorite drinks. Beyond Coffee, a legacy of social impact. Schultz believed in using business as a force for good. He championed social responsibility initiatives. Starbucks became known for providing health care benefits and tuition assistance to its employees. Schultz stepped down as CEO again in 2016. He left behind a legacy of innovation, customer focus, and social impact. Starbucks, under his leadership, had become a global coffee giant. 
Today, Starbucks continues to thrive. It remains committed to its core values of quality, connection, and social responsibility. The company's journey is a testament to the power of a vision, a vision that transformed a small coffee shop into a global icon. 